What's up guys? We are back out in the shop this week. We are starting a new project. Um, I know, I know. I've already got too many projects the way it is. Why start another one? But um, that's just the way it goes sometimes when you're waiting on parts or waiting on this or that or um, whatever, just trying to fill in the voids. Um, my stuff always is put on the back burner, so when I have customer vehicles and customer stuff, that's what comes first. So um, This week we're going to get started on a 1970 Buick GS, it's a Buick Grand Sport. Um, it's uh, got a GS 455 in it, it's a beautiful car. Um, it's got a few issues with some rust, uh, floor pans. Um, they got to be fixed and uh, they're pretty rough. Let's go take a look at it. All right, guys, here it is. It's a 70 GS. Good looking car. The worst part on it is these floor pans. Um, they're both, both sides need done. See that one's got a pretty big hole. Um, but for the most part, this car is really, really sound. Uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and do the floor pans, and then I believe later on um, he's going to bring it back and we're going to get some uh, bad body work fixed up. I don't know if you guys can see that stuff. There's just a few little spots like that where somebody jumped the gun a little bit and sprayed it. It wasn't quite ready. But um, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and knock these pans out. I'll set you guys up on a tripod and uh, go ahead and start cutting. First, we're going to uh, trim our pans down. That's the way I start always. They usually they send, you know, extra. There's always a little bit extra on the outside, like this extra lip here and what have you. But we're going to cut that out and cut this down a little bit here and across this side and get it on the side of the hump and um, the front is good we won't cut anything there it was about the right length then we'll go ahead and take that panel and then we'll set it in here and uh, trace around the outside of that so we know where we need to cut but uh, yeah for now I'll set you guys up on the tripod and if you have any questions um, like I said these once you do one set of pans, you've pretty much done them all. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, run through this as if I pretty much have never done them before. And hopefully this will answer some questions for people. Um, this is a pretty cut and dry job. There's, there's really not even hardly anything under these cars to worry about. Like there's some fuel lines over there in that corner. Um, a couple brake lines the and then the emergency brake cables but we've got all that stuff moved out of the way and um, so yeah it's pretty much ready to cut and, and we'll cut it and peel it out and slap the new ones in for him we'll be back All right, it's uh, trimmed all the way around. I've ground it. You cannot weld um, with this EDP coating or whatever it is, this primer here. Your welds will look like crap. It's best just to grind that off. But um, from here now, I'll take a marker. This is setting really flush and good. I don't know if you guys, it's hard to show that, but... Um, it's basically exactly how we need it so we're going to go ahead and take a marker and um, mark on the outside of this all the way around and then we'll actually not cut on that mark we'll cut it a little bit large so that way we know we've got some extra material but um, this you know this pan covers well above the areas that needed repaired so we're doing just fine um, yeah it'll be clean up into here somewhere so pretty much all the damn or rust was here and down and back but uh, 
I'll go ahead and try to set this pod up, tripod up here in this um, car and go ahead and uh, mark that and get it cut. I, I traced it out with a magic marker um, you kind of see how I did that now I probably won't set my camera up in here um, to make this cut but I'm just gonna cut on the bottom side of my mark I'm gonna give myself extra material I'm just gonna cut it about a half inch I'll keep it perfectly parallel with this other line here and I'll you know cut it here I'm just going to give myself a little bit extra and that's going to give us some material to flange and then a place to overlap where we can't flange and then uh, you know a place to burn our welds in basically so we're not burning through you know trying to butt weld it. It's butt welding these floor pans is not uh, the way to go. You'll have a lot of trouble you know mating new to old so just leave yourself a little extra material and then we'll grind that and then you know we'll punch some holes in here uh, here in a little bit I'll show you guys that with our flange tool and then you'll tack in those holes and then seam it up you know also to give it all that extra strength but we will um, go ahead and get this cut real quick and we'll be back all right I took my three inch cut off and sawed or uh, Cut it all the way around where I needed to. You can see it's separated there. Now we'll go back and um, take our spot weld cutter and um, hit our spot welds that we can that we can get to. Um, there's a few here. We'll go ahead and hit them and uh, these ones here around here, and that'll make this thing come up a whole lot easier. Now if you run into some that you can't get, it's too rusted or whatever, the metal, the metal's chipping away and you just can't get the cutter on it. Just take your um, uh, air hammer right here and get up under it and give it a little whacking. Um, sometimes we'll need that, sometimes not, but I'll go ahead and drill all these spot welds and um, then we'll be back. All right, after just a few minutes of uh, drilling my spot welds, you can see where they're all at. Uh, I only had to use the air hammer on one that I couldn't get to. It was too rotted down in the middle, but you see that panel come around nice and easy. Not much to it. Uh, I did notice that his support here is a little bit gone. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out and try to piece this back in for him. I believe I have another one of these supports laying back in the back somewhere. Uh, I'll try to hunt it up and just cut a section out here and do away with this rot. But uh, For now, I'm going to go ahead and clean up, clean up all my mess and, uh, and start on the front and 
the uh, front panel still needs the same thing cut down to fit and then laid in here and I'll do it the exact same way it's the exact same process for the front as I did the rear drill my spot welds make my cuts pull it out and then I'll be ready to uh, put this sucker back together on this side I'm gonna go ahead and get on this and we'll be back as soon as I'm a little bit closer all right uh, the I went ahead and cut this one the exact same around the outside and uh, drilled my spot welds and this one actually came loose as soon as I got the last spot weld cut I didn't even have to do any jerking or anything so that one was pretty simple and now we've got a big hole so from here we will go in and clean up all of where our welds are gonna be grind all that stuff fix this little spot here that's jacked up um, and then get it ready to put our new pan in still got to grind all this stuff where the spot welds go because we'll got to we'll have to put all that stuff back but not bad pretty easy so far things are going good it's just hot as can be out here today but it's all right we'll still get her done um, for now, I will uh, go ahead and start grinding. All right, guys. Um, I've got. A, I went ahead and pulled that other piece out, and I got that all cut. And I've just laid them both back in here, so you can kind of see how they go. Um, they overlap here, but they're nice good fits really good fits um, like I said though, I am going to pull that out and do something here with this stuff this one's in good shape so we're not going to bother it but this one here we got to do something with we can't leave it that way it wouldn't be right so that's what I'm going to be working on next I'll see if I can find this brace I've got laying outside somewhere I bought once before for one of these and try to cut something out here and fix that up a little bit better but uh, that's what I'll be working on now so we'll be back all right I've made a uh, piece here this is just a rough out I cut it from this old piece I had laying around it's almost the exact same uh, dimensions is this it was just a little bit different so I had to trim it but um, it'll kind of slide up in there like that obviously that ain't exactly how it goes but slide up in there something like that and I'll have to do a little bit more trimming and grinding to make it fit better but you guys get the idea uh, definitely a whole lot easier to use a piece that I already had with these contours than to try to bend something up myself a whole lot faster. I probably got an hour or so in this. The other way, I'm sure I'd have a lot more time in it. But uh, for that, uh, that's pretty much going to work there. I'll go ahead and finish grinding and cutting and getting it exactly where it needs to go. And then burn it in with the welder. And then I'll go ahead and fix this lip here. It's a little bit rotted this spot here so we've got uh, you know some good material to tack to and I'll zip that off that only take a minute or so um, and weld a new little piece on there other than that this side's about ready to put the floors in uh, I will drill a few holes in my panels and stuff a few other little odd and end things to get it closer but we're getting there we'll be back all right, I've got this one all welded in. Just kind of tacked a little bit here and there. I got to finish putting a few welds in it, but uh, I also went ahead and tacked that new flange into place. You guys can see it. No more rot there for him. Um, from there, I'll get up underneath, finish welding it all in, grind it all, um, and then it'll be ready to lay our pans in and trace the bottom side. 
lay it in there about like that. We trace the bottom side around where the side of this goes. That way you can tell uh, where to um, grind and drill your holes for your new pinch welds or your new uh, yeah pinch welds. It'll basically be um, you know somewhere in here will be a couple and then I'll have to drill the holes for the actual seat and the belt bolts. I'll have to put those back in it. But that's the next step. Um, till then we'll be back. All right, short update. Uh, floor pan is tacked in. I got all that stuff squared away, welded up, got it all um, primed, etch primed. Um, tacked all this in. It's all in right where it needs to be. Went ahead and ground it a little bit. We'll go ahead and go back now and burn it in real good the rest of the way. And once that's done, we will move on to this, which I've already got everything drilled on it. You guys can see that it sits down in there real nice. But before then, I wanted to show you um, if you're on, like right here, you're, the nut's gone to hold your seat on this cross rail. In order to fix that without buying a whole new cross rail or whatever, it's, it's pretty easy to make something. Uh, I just take my bolt, run my nut up on it, put my washer there, and tack it. And then I'll take this from the bottom side, slide it up in there. And this is way easier to do when these pans are out to weld it from this top side than it is trying to lay on your back and do this. Unless you're, you got it up on a lift, but uh, anyway, just take it just like that and make sure you run some of that bolt up a little bit. But don't uh, don't burn into your bolt, or you'll have to cut it all out and start over. But just tack that uh, in place there. You can kind of see where I took a Dremel and wallered it out. But, I mean, weld that in real good, and then you back that bolt out, and what's left is the washer with the nut welded to it. And now you have something like this. That's the finished product. Um, from there, you know, we'll seam seal all that and clean it up and from the underside so there's no leak or anything, but um, now he'll have a good solid, you know, nut to hold his seat down. And that sure beats replacing that whole entire rail uh, when you can just, you know, fix the rotted spots kind of like I did. Save a little time and money. Um, wasn't really expecting that rail to be gone anyway. And I was just fortunate enough to have a piece of uh, the other stuff laying around to cut up and make it work. But we will go ahead and throw that pan in now. I'll try to set this tripod up so you guys can see this one. Uh, done a little bit better, but uh, now that I've got somewhere to set my tripod there, but we'll be back. All right, that's it for the passenger side, guys. Um, it went in fairly easy. I had to beat it into place in a few spots to make it match up with the cross beam you guys could probably see me tapping it in but um, I always start on one side weld it up and then just slowly beat it into place and put my tacks and it laid completely flat all my corners you know lined up perfect everything's nice and flush you know you can barely feel it it's even there um, from here I'll finish grinding it and cleaning it all up and we will seam seal it top and bottom to seal it all up and that's pretty much all we're going to do for uh, this he wants to do some uh, undercoating and stuff himself do some of the work himself I can understand that but um, next we'll go ahead and tackle the before we seam seal this we'll go ahead and tackle those pans uh, I got the front one. I got to pick the other one up tonight. Uh, he was hoping to not have to replace it, but it was too bad. So 
we're gonna go ahead and uh, put a new one in there also why we're here might as well so we'll we we will um, tongue twister we will be back as soon as we get the other side cut out I probably won't go as quite as in-depth on that one I want to try to you know finish this video up soon it's probably already 20 30 minutes I don't know yet but we will be back soon all right uh, this side is in everything is now tacked into place uh, got that side finished up yesterday this side didn't quite take as long uh, didn't have to cut out any braces I just had to weld those nuts on this side so we've got four seat bolts uh, now it's pretty much ready I'll go ahead and go back and fill in uh, on these tack spots go ahead and hit in between all these again grind those as soon as that's done then it will be ready for some rust encapsulator or some people call it pour 15 uh, this this is actually rust encapsulator customer supplied so we'll go ahead and coat everything we've done up here back into here just to kind of seal it in and give him and us that peace of mind this isn't going to happen again he wants to finish out the bottom himself so we are just going to do this here put the seat back in it and that'll pretty much finish this up after the uh rust encapsulator though i will go and seam seal the inside so it's all you know sealed up from the elements but we'll let him finish the underside All right, it's completely done. Everything we're doing at least. The seam sealer's all done. Everything's been coated the whole all the way back to here. He is going to do the bottom himself. So it's just the uh, primer that they sent it in. I went ahead and touched up any bare metal spots so he doesn't have any problems with that until he gets it done but turned out really nice now we're going to take it off the stands and get it on out of here delivery tomorrow if you guys learned anything if you got any questions give us a like and a subscribe we tried to cover the uh, Buick GS pans pretty good um yeah, like I said, any questions, comments, drop them down below.